All right, question number two. How do I adjust to a new school quickly? Well, I think that changes, you know, person to person and the type of person that you are. Um, you know, I know overall, the one thing that I say to transfers to incoming freshmen, and, uh, you know, as a whole is just be yourself and don't be afraid to get involved. That's the big thing is getting involved. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if you're going to adjust to a new school, you have academics to adjust to, but then you also have that, you know, outside of academics. And if you're going to make new friends and, and, you know, find that future home for the rest of your college, you want to get involved. And whether that's joining clubs or, you know, playing sports, whatever it may be, definitely get involved. Uh, and then the other thing is, you know, adjusting to the academics. That's obviously an adjustment school to school. And you want to make sure that you're prepared and just studying and staying on top of that. Um, similar to, you know, that uh, admissions have different counselors for transfers. They might also have resources specifically for transfer students that you can reach out to to talk about, you know, your academic path and, and the path that you're on because that might be different now than some of the other people that you're at school with. Yeah, I know some schools have, like, transfer centers, specifically for transfer students, obviously. <laughs> um, so that's probably, they probably have a lot of helpful clubs or, like, people you can meet, just, like, meet somebody new. Uh, but also just, like, finding... Like if you're like moving to a campus, living on campus, just like finding a way to get comfortable there. Maybe find like joining the gym, finding a new like restaurant you like going to, just like establishing, establish, <laughs> establishing yourself First at the try. school. Third try. Oh. That's great. <laughs> Good job. What would you say? First try. I thought you said fourth. No, no. Okay. Anyways, um, some schools will even allow you to request to live with another transfer student. I know that was um, something that I wish that I had done. In hindsight, I actually opted for a single room, and that was extremely isolating. <laughs> so um, I would not recommend doing that. Um, I think it's a good idea to at least see if it's an option to live with someone who, who's also a transfer. Um, especially, again, I was in a single dorm, and I was in a freshman dorm. So although I made friends, it was not, it didn't really feel, it wasn't what I was looking for. <laughs> Did you so, have uh, orientation with the freshmen? No, like I had a transfer of... orientation okay. uh, that I did not attend. I was going to say, how did it go? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Uh, <laughs> so go to that. Yeah, I think uh, a lot of the, if the same things that happen for the freshmen are going to happen for transfer. Yeah. So having a transfer orientation and sometimes they'll actually lump you in with the freshman orientation too, depending on the school. But uh, definitely attend those. And as Dan was saying, just that in and of itself is going to have a ton of events in it. Don't be uh, scared. I know obviously there's different types of personalities and the introverts and the extroverts. Try to break out of your shell, even if it's just a little bit. Um, if it's something that interests you in the least bit, try to make the effort to go there. I know it's difficult, especially bearing an introvert is pulling teeth to try to get her to go out somewhere. Um, so if you if you do those things, uh, for example, like I just said, my wife, extreme introvert, joined drama club, and so she was a she wasn't a transfer student, but she was a commuter student. So she kind of had that similar. Um, didn't really know everybody on campus, wasn't at the orientations, and never had that connection with anybody. Then she joined drama club, met a bunch of her friends, and they stayed her friends for the four years that she was there. So I think there's different ways that you can get in uh, to different cliques and different groups, and definitely should push yourself in any sort of way to get into something. Uh, and it could just be you and one other person just hanging out. Right? It's, All you uh, need is one friend. <laughs> that's right. You sort of spoke to it saying, you know, room with another transfer student. You're yeah. not alone in this right. process. So, you know, there are other transfers and there's other people that maybe not ne necessarily transfer, but they're new to the school with the same, you know, the, all the same. And so getting to know them and, and getting involved with them definitely helps. Right. Yeah, I wish I had been able to live with someone who else who is also a transfer. But one thing did happen that was really nice is one day I was extremely late to a lecture and I saw another girl who, you know, just kind of looked like she probably came from the same kind of town that I did. Like she was dressed the same way that I was and she looked equally as lost and late. It ended up that she was also a transfer and we were both looking for our lecture hall. We both were lost and late and then we became friends. And two semesters later, we went to Barcelona together. So 
you can find your people, and it doesn't necessarily mean you can only be friends with people who are also transfers, but it helps to have that lifeline that you, you're going through that similar experience. You're no longer freshmen, but it feels so new. It's nice to have somebody to navigate those waters with, for sure. I actually had a girl my sophomore year who transferred halfway through the semester into my classroom, and I guess the class was very different from how she was taught at her old school, so she was having trouble adjusting to just the small class size professor. So she actually asked me to study with her after school, and we became friends, and I kind of helped her that way. So maybe reach out to kids in your class, especially if you're struggling like that, to try to get some one-on-one help. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's in also just similar vein, too. If you're uncomfortable asking the students in your class, if you ask the professor, they'll hook you up. And usually there's, like, study centers, too. So you can go for help anywhere. Um, mm -hmm. I don't say anywhere, but you can go to help. <laughs> Not anywhere. It'd be okay. Yeah. But I, and Everywhere. that's another thing, too. Just explore whatever city you're into. Uh, you might not meet people on campus that you click with. But if you're downtown somewhere and you're at whatever the local restaurant, like I think you were saying, um, in a different hangout spot, like um, there's a place on Champlain, the Java um, Blackwater. Um, so, like, if Java you go, Blackwater? I think it was just called Blackwater. Oh, okay. um, <laughs> he wanted to call it Java. Yeah, it, it, didn't, it didn't make sense, but he knew it. <laughs> Everybody knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> it's Vermont, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Um, muddy waters. That's what it was. Hey, muddy waters. That sounds yeah. disgusting. So if you go down there, it's, well, it's just it's a coffee place. So if it's you not go down, appetizing. But Java Blackwater. You were close. Java Blackwater. Muddy water. Muddy water. First try. First muddy try. water. That's, that's a terrible name. See. It's a great. It's spot. like they just went I don't know money. if it's still open, but we'll probably find not. We'll find Free it. advertising for muddy water. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> if you go down Sponsor there, you the be... yeah, <laughs> they're sponsoring the podcast. <laughs> Good old Blackwater. <laughs> so if you go down into the local areas, you can usually find people that um, are into the same things that you are. And even if it's like going out to music events in the area, a lot of the places will have, depending on what city you're in, but different events. Smooth that... jazz. Smooth jazz and ice cream, baby. Yeah. <laughs> Call back to our podcast <laughs> from way long time ago, but... Relax with smooth jazz and ice. <laughs> Good times. Yeah. yeah. I think adjustment to is almost the same thing. It's I, going right back to Dan's point at the very start is it depends on you. So if you're somebody that is able to just go out and make friends, it sounds like whoever asked this question is probably a little shy and uh, reserved. And that's not a big deal. You'll find people that are like you. You might even find somebody that is completely opposite of you and gets you to break out of your shell and experience all the things around campus. And uh, So, yeah, don't be afraid to uh, try new things. Go out and have fun. Give it a chance, too. You know, don't just... You transfer there for a reason, so if you don't all of a sudden find that reason day one, you know, give it a chance and get yourself, you know, acclimated before you just... You know, write it off. Write it off, exactly. Yeah, maybe if you transfer and you're not really adjusting that first two weeks, you might be like doing something wrong. Maybe you're not joining as many clubs, meeting new people. So maybe that's the problem. It's your fault. <laughs> it's your fault. <laughs> You're doing it She was trying wrong. to put it nicely. You're not doing college right I think what Mackenzie's trying to say <laughs> is that... <laughs> no. <laughs> well, no, to be honest, um, to be serious for a moment, when I transferred, I... I wasn't happy about it because it's not, it's a process and it was a big change for me because I happened to go to school down in Florida so I had to pack my stuff back up and head back north and I felt like maybe I failed um, myself or my family somehow. Um, so when I got to Northeastern I wasn't in the best place mentally so it took me a little while just to get back to that homeostasis, that baseline Abbey of my bubbly, friendly, happy self. So at first it was a lot harder than it was down the line because just how I was feeling at the time. So maybe your reason for transferring is different than mine was, but you might not be 100% feeling your best when you get to your new school. So try to give yourself a break. And if you don't feel like joining a club the very first day, you don't have to, but give yourself a little bit of time to just get back to that normalcy 
and then see how you feel about it.